chapter number seven. in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. 
In Exodus 19.9, the Bible, uh, 19.8, the Bible says, And all the people answered, All that the Lord hath spoken, we will do. I love when God creates a covenant. I love when God gives His presence. And He said, I will give you my presence as a covenant, but you've got to be the keeper of my presence. You've got to keep the covenant. It's interesting that God would then take and He would send His presence as the Ark of the Covenant among His people. It was in length, it was 27 inches in depth. Uh, 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 it, I'm sorry, it was about 4 feet in length, about 27 inches in depth. It was overlaid on the outside and within with gold. We know that it was carried with staves. There were cherubims on that Ark of the Covenant. Uh, its wings touched, and upon that, that area between the Ark of the Covenant was the mercy seat where blood would be sprinkled. The glittering of the cherubims, they watched over as their wingtips touched each other. It was an emblem, it was a visible sign that God's presence was with Israel. His guidance was there, His protection was there, His healing was there. All of His provisions was there. God loves covenant. God loves His presence among people. We look and we see that it was there. Inside the Ark of the Covenant was the Ten Commandments. There was also Aaron's budding rod. There was a pot of manna. And once a year on the Day of Atonement, there between the wings of the cherubims, there Brother Walt, the priest, would sprinkle blood that was from a, a land that had been watched and had been given. There, Sister Dietrich, they would take and they would sprinkle the blood in Yahweh. You may say, Brother Seville, I never hear that word in this church, Yahweh. Well, it, it, it is the Old Testament Hebrew name of God. If you lived back in those days, you wouldn't be saying God. You wouldn't be saying Lord. Brother David, you'd be saying Yahweh. Yahweh is with us. Let's pray to Yahweh. And there as they would sprinkle the blood upon the mercy seat, there, uh, Terry, it was that God would say, no longer will my wrath be given, but I'm blinded to my wrath. I see only the blood. I don't see the sins of man. And so my mercy is given to mankind because they have kept Israel, or they have kept covenant with me. Israel kept crops. The most valued possession, if you look at the Old Testament, particularly during uh, the Pentateuch, and then as you come into 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, even as you go throughout uh, uh, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, you'll find that the most valued possession was the Ark of the Covenant. Because it was God's presence with His people. It was a covenant that I am with you. And if you will keep my uh, covenant, Sister Susan, you will be a keeper of my presence. It's interesting that somewhere between 450 years, that's a long time. Many of you have been around 450 years. You might feel like you've been around, uh, but, but you've not been around 450 years. That's a pretty long time from Mount Sinai to the time of the judges, Brother Josh. Somewhere in the middle of that, Israel forgot to uphold their end of the covenant in keeping the presence of God. For all practical purposes, they had lost the meaning of the Ark of the Covenant. It was still there, Brother David, but somewhere in the middle of it, they forgot what the meaning of the Ark of the Covenant was. And so God became exhausted with Israel because they had forgot to be a keeper of the presence of God. of the presence of God. And so here it was, Brother Eli, that the Philistines began to fight against the nation of Israel. Now the Philistines, Brother Rick, uh, were always afraid of Israel. Israel were never really afraid of the Philistines because, Brother Caleb, what happened is God's, God's grace and mercy was always upon the Israelites and they always won the battle. But this time, uh, there was lots of casualties. Amen. 4,000 men suffered casualty. Amen. In this war. And all of a sudden, uh, the Israelites, Brother Craig, said, we need the Ark of the Covenant. Someone remembered that the Ark of the Covenant, why, it's a good luck chart. If we bring the Ark of the Covenant out to the battle, we will win the battle. So two men named Hophni and Phinehas, they brought the Ark of the Covenant out to the battle. They were the high priest's son, Eli, the high priest. 
They brought the Ark of the Covenant out. And so here it was that they thought they would win the battle. But Sister Rachel, uh, and as they were cheering and moving and thinking the battle was won, and the Philistines were saying, what's going on? They've not won the battle. They have lots of casualties. Why are they excited? They looked and seen that the Ark of the Covenant was there. And the Philistines said, we've got to take the Ark of the Covenant from them. The Ark of the Covenant, they may win war against us. They may win the battle. Let's take it. So they all rallied around the Philistines and they took the Ark of the Covenant. It's interesting, Sister Rachel, because God would rather go home with the enemy than stay where his people were that disrespected him and did not keep the covenant and were out keepers of the presence of God. Wow. Wow. The Bible says that he forsook the tabernacle of Shiloh. And so when God's people failed the terms of being caretakers of the presence of God, God allowed the ark of the covenant to be taken. Bear with me for a few minutes. Let me share a few more things about this. The word comes, Sister Alice, the Ark of the Covenant has been taken. The Philistines, the enemy side has the Ark of the Covenant. And so God, all of a sudden, Eli is so upset, he hears the Ark of the Covenant has been taken. Brother Caleb, he also hears that Hophni and Phinehas has been killed. And this big, fat priest, the Bible says that that's what he was, big, he fell over. And when he did, he broke his neck. If it wasn't bad enough, Phineas' wife was with child. And all of a sudden, she went into labor. Her husband has been killed. Her father-in-law was dead. The Ark of the Covenant has been taken. Uh, uh, the Israelites are lamenting that the presence of God has, come, uh, has been taken. And so she goes into childbirth, and she gives birth to a baby, and she names him Ichabod. For the glory of God is the pardon. Yahweh, uh, the, the presence of all, Yahweh, of the presence of God. <laughs> 30,000 dead. Eli dead. Phineas is dead. Hophni is dead. Phineas' wife is dead. Terrible situation. So, so here we have the story. How terrible it was. So we hear of the Ark of the Covenant. It's taken and it's placed in Eistad. There in Eistad it is for seven months. And so all of a sudden they realize, Terry, that the people are getting very sick. And for the past seven months, the people of the Philistines are sick. We've got to get rid of the Ark of the Covenant. We don't want this anymore. People are getting sick because the Ark of the Covenant is here. And so they try to take it back and they try to give it to, 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 to the Israelites. And, and, and so here they are. They're overjoyed. And they're excited that they're getting rid of the, the Ark of the Covenant. 34,000 footmen dead. Eli, his son's fifth and wife. The Ark of the Covenant comes back. And so the Israelites decide that they're going to pry the Ark of the Covenant apart. And, and the Word of God says that 50,000 more die. Imagine that number of women, if you would. Here is 84,004 people dead. That's a lot of funerals to attend. And so they said, let's take the Ark of the Covenant. We're going to put it in a bit of that time. Abinadab has three sons. His sons' names are Eliezer, Uzzah, and Ahio. The Word of God in my text that I read this morning, the Word of God says that Eliezer, he was sanctified of Abinadab's son to be a keeper of the Ark of the Covenant. Let's talk about that for a little bit this morning. I'm talking about young men, amen, that had to 
keep the Ark of the Covenant. And so the responsibilities, they included a lot of things. There had to be an, an appropriate conduct. There had to be faithfulness. There had to be an established relationship to keep the Ark of the Covenant. There had to be an understanding that we have to keep what the Ark of the Covenant stands for. Amen. The Ark of the Covenant will give us preservation. Amen. But we've got to preserve the Ark and we've got to maintain it. Amen. We've got to be holy that we can take care of the Ark of the Covenant. There's a lot of responsibility that has now been placed upon the shoulder of one young man named Eleazar. Yes, he has two brothers, but he is being the one that, that has been chosen to take care of the Ark of the Covenant. And so it's here for 20 years. Can you imagine a young person and your, your, your responsibility of your life as a young person is to take care of the Ark of the Covenant? The nation of Israel has not done it. it. It's taken away to the Philistines and Ashdod. Amen. They don't take care of it. And so they grow sick. And so God has required me to take care of the Ark of the Covenant right here in my own home. I think there's a lot this morning to be said to each of us about taking care of the presence of God when we look at Eliezer. I've given you a lot of information. God's always wanted covenant. That's why He gave His law on Mount Sinai. That's why He built the tabernacle. That's why the Ark of the Covenant was there, that the wrath of God wouldn't be poured out upon mankind. But He may see the blood and He'll be blinded to the sins of Israel and the mercies of God will be poured out. But yet they took the presence of God for granted. They only brought it out when they felt like they needed it. Kind of like a spare tire. How many of you use that extra tire that's in your trunk or underneath your car? You may not think about it, but let me tell you what, when you get a flat tire, how you'll think about it. Yeah. And that's how the nation of Israel was with the Ark of the Covenant. It didn't change their life. It didn't cause them to have a holy lifestyle. Amen. They built up groves. They worshipped idols. Uh, they let their heart go far from God. Uh, uh, 450 years. It only grew worse. They only brought God out when they needed the spare time. I wonder how it is for us as believers. Are we maintaining and honoring and keepers of the presence of God? Or do we only bring out the presence of God when we need to spend time? That's what it's really in. But now here it is, Eleazar. And those boys could have looked at each other and they could have said, listen, we're not priests, we're not Levites, we're not trained for this. We've got plans, we've got friends, we've got dates, we've got school, we've got dreams, we've got ambitions, we have things that we want to do. But no, Eliezer said, no, that matters. The most important thing in my life is taking care of the presence of God. You may have friends, you may have plans, you may have ambitions, you may have dates and you may have things that you want to do, but I want to ask you what's the most important thing in your life. God is looking for Eleazar's. God is looking for men and women who will be keepers of the presence of God. And so here it was that Eleazar, he looked at the temple and he was in awe and he was in conviction. He said, I'll take care of the Ark of the Covenant. I'll do it. No one else will do it, but I'll do it. Listen, I'll prioritize my life. I'll, 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 I'll alter my commitments. I'll reset my goals. Amen. My ambitions can be forfeited. My dreams can be put on the back burner. Amen. The most important thing in my life is the Ark of the Covenant and the glory of God. So I will keep that. This morning, I want to challenge you. God is looking for men and women who will be in covenant relationship with Him. He wants to bless your life. He wants to lead your life. He wants to be a part of your life. He wants to be glorified in your life. But He'll only keep the commitment if you will bind the commitment on your end. It will be bound on His end. Amen. He wants to work and move in your life. But He has to be first priority. Amen, Brother Seville. That's right, Pastor. Amen. If I want God to work and move in my life, it has to be first. Sister Tina nailed it really well this morning by saying in her life, amen, she enjoyed motherhood. What a great thing. Amen. And yes, it is busy. I can tell you firsthand, it's very busy. Uh, my wife has it way more than me. Amen, Mom. But, but, but when that season, God's not good. God, what do you have for me? 
I've got to keep you first. I've got to prioritize you. My dreams, my goals, my ambitions, they're on the back burner. God, I want your glory. And if you will keep your end of the commitment, God will keep His end of the commitment. And so, while his brothers enjoyed their youth, Eliezer, he was committed to pour in his life to be a keeper of the presence of God. If anyone that he associated with, they had to know that the first thing about his life was the presence of God. That God has to be honored. Let me stop here for a moment. How about all those that you associate with? Do they know what your priority is? Do they know that your priority is the presence of God? Wait, that type of language don't fly here. I'm a keeper of the presence of God. Listen, that type of, of attitude that don't work here because I'm a keeper of the presence of God. Listen, if you're going to come around, you're more than welcome to, to, to enjoy uh, our life. And, but, 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 but the presence of God is what is kept here. And that is a priority above everything else in our life. Let me tell you what, we would have real revival if the people of God became a keeper of the presence of God. Amen. Here it was that, that no king, no priest, no tribe, no people in one of the Ark of the Covenant, the Eliezer said, here it is. I'll be a custodian of the presence of God. I'll be a keeper of the Word of God. I'll be a keeper of the divine provision of God. I'll be a keeper of the divine power of God. I'll be a keeper of the divine presence of God. That'll be the priority of my life. It's a challenge this morning for each of us. Are we keepers of the presence of God more than anything else? And so here it was, 20 years passes, and now David becomes king of Israel. He's very ignorant in his ways, and he's excited. He wants to bring the Ark of the Covenant back to, 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 Israel, uh, to, to Bethlehem. It's about eight miles away, and he's excited. He built a tent for it. Later, Solomon, his son, will build a, a, a temple for it. And so he builds it for the wall, but he's ignorant of knowing how to carry it back. And so here he is. He brings it from Abinadab's house. Eliezer, a house his heart must be broken, but how satisfied he must be to know that he's been a keeper of the presence of God. And there it is. They go through a nation's threshing floor. And his brother Uzzah reaches out to study the Ark of the Covenant. And because he is, he is disrespectful, maybe not intentionally, but because he never learned to be a real keeper of the presence of God, he reaches out to touch the Ark of the Covenant. And God smokes him dead. Wow, what a sad day it is for the nation of Israel. What a sad day it is for David. And so he aborts right there. Amen. Uh, 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 the, 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 the bringing of the Ark of the Covenant. So he takes and he lodges it at Obadiah's house there for three months until somewhere in the middle of that, David gets the knowledge of how he should appropriately bring the Ark of the Covenant back to its rightful place. I'm talking about being keepers of the presence of God. Sometimes we can be ignorant about the presence of God, the power of God, and the house of God, but there comes a time when we have to get into the Word of God. And we say, God, because I'm a keeper of Your presence, as Sister Tina said, I get in Your Word, and I know how to live my life appropriately. I know how to keep Your law. I know how to honor Your presence and live my life because I am a keeper. I love Your presence. I love Your Word. I love Your divine power. So God, here it is. I'm here to protect it. You see, here was a man who gave up his life to be a keeper of the presence of God. 20 years, Sister Rachel. 20 years, Sister Maria. 20 years, Brother Dennis, his life lived being a keeper of the presence of God. It didn't stop from there. So the Ark of the Covenant, David takes it back. We know the story. How David was so excited that he danced. Amen. He danced in his ephod there uh, because the presence of God was coming back. I believe the presence of God will do something to us. There's a joy and there is excitement about having the presence of God. I wonder how many of you got up this morning and you just started dancing because you knew you were coming to church. 
I'm going to be in the presence of God. I'm going to be with God's people. And you can do that? What? But there should be an excitement, every one of us, to know that we're coming to the presence of God and we're hosting the presence of God and we're entertaining the presence of God in our life. Amen. It's not coming into a sanctuary alone and <laughs> seeing the folks that we get to share our life and the journey of the presence of God, but, but it's about the presence of God and being able to come into it and knowing that we are keepers of the presence of God. Do you realize what that means? Yesterday we had taken... We had taken my mom back home to West Virginia. So we took a little walk. And there's, when we, our property, uh, on, on the skirts of it, uh, there's three churches. Two of them which are active and one which is very, very old. Uh, probably built in the early 1900s or late 1800s. It's an old building, but they still keep it small. It's amazing how that little building housed a lot of people, Sister Tina. Even with that outhouse still standing outside, I don't think they use it. They just preserve it. But there it is. And I was thinking about that brother wall that there it was and, and, and I'm not here giving slant, uh, slandery to any religion I'm simply stating something this morning uh, that here it was that that Methodist church you know they used to uh, really they, 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 they were a lot different than they are today I'm just going to leave it there amen uh, the, the, the presence of God being hosted there uh, uh, but there was that little church and there come a time uh, Sister Susan where the Holy Ghost got started moving in the Methodist church that was at one end of the property, Sister Tina, and some folks didn't like the Holy Ghost. They didn't like people speaking in tongues. They didn't like people uh, uh, hosting the presence of God and, and living the life of the Spirit. And so they say, you got to go. And so there's the Pentecostal church was formed that I grew up in. Amen. But thank God for this. That long before Sister Sandy I ever come on the scene, there were some people that were keepers of the presence of God that now allowed a young life and now a middle-aged man to be able to experience the presence of God. But there's something that I gotta do in my life and you gotta do in your life. We gotta be keepers of the presence of God. Amen. That it may preserve the next generation. Amen. That we may show them the importance of having the presence of God, not as a good luck charmer, not as a spare tire, but as a way of life that it alters our dreams and our ambitions, our friendships, and everybody around about us, amen, they know that if you're going to have a relationship with us, you got to honor God. Amen. amen. I'm talking about being keepers of the presence of God. David said this, the Lord is my keeper. Amen. God can be trusted to keep His side of the covenant. He will support, He will preserve, He will maintain, He will watch over, He will defend. Amen. But I want you to know that God is very eager for you to keep your side of the covenant. I'm not worried about God keeping His side this morning. I'm worried about each of us are we keepers of the covenant of God that allows God to work and move in our life? If you're here this morning and you say, well, I've never really seen God move. God's not really moved the way. I'm not questioning God. But I think it's time for us to evaluate ourselves. Are we keeping the heart of the covenant for God to be able to move? Israel, you know why the Philistines overtook you? 84,000 plus men and women dead. You know why? Because you didn't keep your end of the covenant. God didn't let you down. But God was so frustrated that you were not keepers of the covenant that He said, no. I'll go somewhere else. And He went to the enemy's camp. They didn't run there either. So He came back to the house of Abinadab. And have been of that sanctified his son Eliezer. And Eliezer said, I'll be one man who will keep the presence of God. And the blessing of God that came down upon that young man because of his perseverance in keeping the covenant with God. Jesus prayed, He said, Father, keep me through thy own 
You see what Jesus was saying? That word keep means to watch over me, to guard me from loss or injury, to keep an eye on me. Amen. That's exactly what God wanted to do with the children of Israel. That's exactly what he did with Eliezer. He kept them. Paul challenged Timothy and he said, keep that which is committed to you. So God keeps in the fact that He prevents us from injury or loss. He watches over us. Let me stop here for a minute. Give me a minute. I see the time. You may say, Brother Seville, but I've suffered loss when I ask God to work and move in my life. Listen, this isn't a, a new question for me. If you've suffered loss, I truly believe...